Today, the DS Incubator uh, is the last one of the series about uh, working with Git from the terminal. Um, I'm going to be talking today about inspecting the history of our Git commits, which is something that is extremely useful uh, and is a great reason for uh, using Git along with maybe the ability to undo things and stuff like that. It is super important to be able to retrieve things from the past, to explore the past, um, to find things, uh, to see who contributed to a repository and so on and so forth. So I'm gonna be talking a lot, mostly about git log, which is one command uh, and showing also a few other commands that also relate to this idea of exploring uh, a Git repository, um, but with a big focus on, on log and some of the flags that Git log has that are pretty useful. Uh, I'm not going to be covering Git bisect or bisect, uh, that is close to Jackson's heart and because he was he's super busy this week, uh, unfortunately he couldn't um, lead this meetup, but uh, I'm hoping to, uh, after this um, session ends, uh, after this series ends, um, maybe he can one day talk a little bit about specifically git by sex, so that one command that is pretty powerful. But also I'm not super worried because it is a fairly advanced feature and one that um, well, it's very useful when you need it, but uh, it is not something that you use every day. So the things I'm gonna be covering today are actually more like everyday things. So with that, I'm gonna expand my screen. Um, can you thumbs up if uh, you see my screen? Yes, you do, cool. Just to confirm what Google is telling me. So we are done with this and uh, the lesson, uh, I'm gonna be covering it um, to my discretion, really. I'm going to be covering some of the commands here that are more useful, but uh, instead I'm going to be just, you know, popping up a terminal. And uh, let me see if I have another one here. No, this one here. I'm going to be popping up a terminal and using one repository uh, as an example. So you may be familiar with the package use this. Um, let's see if there is anything late there. No, I think I'm up to date there. So use this um, is a package from the Arlib organization. It's maintained by Jenny Bryan. And because I use it very often, sometimes I find little things that I would like to change and then I submit a pull request and sometimes they make it there. So I'm gonna be using uh, this repository to explore uh, what have I done in uh, use this, just as an example. So. Um, the first thing that you might want to know is that uh, Git has a grep command that allows you to basically um, explore any piece of text that exists in the current uh, working tree. So whatever you know your file structure looks like right now, uh, not in the past, just in the present, with Git grep you can you can find stuff. So, you know, you could use Git grep to do something like, okay, is there any code tag as to do? Uh, and, and there you see, you know, which uh, files uh, those are. So uh, Git grep uh, is, is very powerful to explore the snapshot where you're gonna write right now standing of that repository, but um, it doesn't kind of go into the, the history of uh, the repo. So you may want to know about other other tools to do that, but then there is also a git. Uh, it, it is also a git. Uh, so, for example, let's do if I do git grep and I, I try to find say my name. Let's do Mauro like that. Um, it looks like my name appears in the working tree. So the current, the latest version of this package has my name somewhere. And where is that? Okay, in the news file, uh, and that is because in this um, uh, PR number 990, I apparently did something there. So that's why, you know, this, the current snapshot of uh, use this includes my name somewhere there. But let's see what else we can do. So if I do um, git grep, but now as a flag of the command git log, what do I get? 
that command what does is digs uh, into the commits uh, into the commit messages. So as you can see, my name appears in one uh, message. So this is what's being matched by this command. And now I know in which commit that is. I know uh, when that happened, which year, which time, and so on and so forth. So we discuss first git grep. Now we discuss git log and the flag grep of git log. So again, if you want to search for whatever you have in a current snapshot of your repo, you can go right away with git grep. But if you want to dig into the entire history and see if any commit message contains a string, then you do uh, a git log minus minus grep. And what I'm passing here actually is a is, um, regular expression. So if I, if I did something like this, I would still match the commit message because uh, it understands um, regular expressions. So what else can we do? Okay, what happens if I do git log, if I wanted to search for you know, something similar to git grep that finds text, not just the, the commit message, but like a piece of text, say that you know, I wrote a function and then I removed the function. I don't know when I removed it. I just know that you know, the name of the function, more or less, I remember it. So I could you know, use a regular expression to try and match it across the entire history of that repository. So for that, you use minus capital S, it's not my, uh, lowercase, it's capital S. And that will match strings in the entire uh, history of that uh, repository. So let's see if I do that. So I'm now trying to match text that contains the word Mauro in the entire um, repository. So let's see what we get. Remember that when, we're, when we were matching just the commit message, I, you know, I matched only one commit, but now you can see there is more than one Let's make the screen a little smaller. Uh, so at least two that I can see, and let's move down. Okay, that's it. That, so my, uh, the, the, it looks like there is two commits that somewhere in those commits, there is the uh, word Mauro in them. But uh, I may not be seeing them right now because all that I get as an output is the git log, is the output of git log. And the output of git log doesn't give me by default any uh, you know, um, any uh, view into the files that change, but I can do that very easily, right? So if I do the flag minus p, p is for patch. So then I get not just the you know the, the commit uh, information, but also I actually do get the changes. So let's see the first commit something changed that had my name in it. So there is a file somewhere there called uh, in tests, in manual tests for the function PR find, uh, this text was removed in that commit and that text had my name. So it's interesting to think that uh, not only you can match text that was added or modified, but also you can match text that was deleted. So if I was, if this was, um, you know, an action trying to search for a function that I deleted, this command will allow me to find the commit that removed that function and just bring it back to the present, if that's what I want. So that's why you know I insist that we can uh, delete code that is dead, that is no longer needed, as opposed to comment it out, because with version control, you can do always a git log minus S, capital S, to match whatever you want to find and then uh, just check that out. So you can commit, check out, use git commit check out and the SHA of this commit and the name of the file to get that specific file back into the present or even with a flag minus P, you can, you can bring to the present that specific chunk of text, not the entire file. So let's scroll down a little bit more to see what else we have. So if, uh, well, this is the commit message, but remember we are trying to see what was the actual text that contained the string Mauro in those commits. So if I go down uh, here, you see that uh, in this commit is when my name was added um, on the um, news file, right? And here under here, Okay, it looks like my name was here because actually that this is a little reprex that I wrote at the time and I used my own name, my username uh, for because you know this function was working on a uh, on my GitHub account and my GitHub account contains my name. So uh, summary: so Git grep again digs into the current 
working tree into the snapshot you're standing right now. Git log grep uh, actually digs into commit messages across the entire history, but just matches the strings on the commit message. And git log minus capital S uh, looks for text, not uh, in the message of a commit, but in actual in the changes of that uh, commit. So we are going to be now d d doing um, working with another flag uh, to filter uh, the log. So before I do that, I would like to kind of pause a little bit because I I'm hoping that this could have uh, inspired some wows somewhere because uh, I feel that this is at least I find it like, very powerful being able to go back, uh, delete whatever I want, commit that version control, and then retrieve it whenever I want. Uh, do we have any any wow here to share or any comment or question? Wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Amazing. <laughs> I, I'm not going to let Jackson speak because when he does, he, he curses. So he was, he's not going to say why. He's going to say something that it's uh, in a, in unprofessional and inappropriate. <laughs> okay. Should I move on and, and show you a few more things here? Okay. So now um, I wanted to show you um, how to filter commits by, by time, by author. So you know that you know if you use, for example, git log uh, one line and the flag, uh, say, decorate, we get pretty cool output. Um, we see, you know, branches, um, Actually, there is something here. One line, the grid graph. One line, graph. The grid. Yeah, it's not what I want. Actually, I'm gonna use my own Git log. Uh, I'm gonna show you in a moment what that is. So basically, you can see in this version of Git log, um, it is just an alias that I'm gonna uh, discuss in a moment. Uh, you can see that the um, the um, log output contains a lot of metadata. Uh, it shows the branches, it shows the commit message, it shows also when the changes uh, were made two days ago, for example, and it shows who did those changes. So this, um, actually, let's see uh, alias, let's see what that alias is. Um, aliases. Grab for git log. Aliases. Hmm, alias. Okay, so. Alias. Grab log. It's this one here. Okay, so this is a pretty uh, involved uh, output. Um, this alias here, uh, a, a little complex. But um, never mind, we're going to retrieve that information uh, later. Probably the one thing I wanted to say about alias is that you can create your own aliases by doing something like uh, git config, because you're going to add that alias to a file that git knows about, and it's called config. Uh, and you can say that if you want to add that at the global level, you would say global. In this case, I don't want to mess up my global config, so I'm going to say local. Uh, and then you do, um, you say what uh, alias you want to create. Remember that we have used something like git config global to say, you know, what is my username? Remember that? So if I ask git config global username, uh, I get my name. So now instead of doing that, um, I'm going to set one. So the, the, the way you set things is, you know, you did, you do the, um, the, the key and then you do the value in this case could be Mauro Lepore, right? So uh, same thing we're gonna do alias and we're gonna call the alias in this case for example git uh, sorry log with a g for graph or whatever um, and then I'm gonna do uh, the value so I could do um, I could probably paste all this but I'm gonna do it like more simple I could say uh, log one line graph the correct. So that is the um, ultimate git log as uh, some people describe it. Uh, so with that, I could now, or I should now do uh, git log g 
and I would get the output that uh, I would get otherwise if I type all those flags. So when you find yourself uh, you know, working with Git and using too many flags, then you can create yourself an alias. So that on steroids, um, it could be something like what I have here. If I type G-L-O-L, git log, whatever that is, uh, and I get this kind of really fancy git log. And the reason I wanted to show you this is first because if we haven't covered aliases in depth. That's how you set them up. And second, because I really like this output because it has so much metadata that is useful for me. So with this, let's do something useful now. So let's say that I want to filter the git log to find commits that match my name. So uh, now um, I'm gonna you know, call that command, G-L-O-L, and now I can use the flag author. If you don't remember the flags, remember you can do autocompletion in some terminals. So, uh, and then author will just match uh, strings. Uh, and I think it's gonna match them in a non case sensitive way. So if I do that, I can basically see uh, across the entire history of the use this package, uh, any commit that has been made by me. So by, by the author that matches the name uh, Mauro. So that's, that's pretty cool because you can find uh, commits um, very quickly. And you can then also uh, add flags like scenes and, uh, and the date specifications for Git are extremely clever. So you can say since, um, like, I don't know, uh, one since last week. Did I do anything last week? Maybe not. Since last, last year. Okay, since last year, I have done a few things. I have you know committed one change 12 days ago uh, and then another change 11 months ago. Um, so, it is very flexible. I recommend you to, of course, as usual, do uh, you know git log help to find all the many ways in which you can use this super powerful command. In particular, you know the flags uh, that you can use um, for for things like this. You know you can say since uh, you know 20 days ago, uh, since yesterday, or whatever. Like that's those you know combining those flags. Who, when. Uh, is extremely powerful. So I'm gonna pause that one more time again for more wows or for more questions or comments. Wows? Wow. <laughs> Thank you, Monica. Yes, yes. I found that very useful, uh, but there is a short version of that that you can use when you are about to release something and you need to find the git log between say the last tag and the head of the repo so let's first clean this uh, terminal a little bit and and let's let's see what i mean by tag so remember um I'm gonna use my own git log. Uh, you can see that you know um, there is a tag called v2 so use this two has been released a few days ago uh, but there is more tags, so let's see, git tag, what do, do we get? So we have, you know, 2, 1.63. So let's see that we wanted to explore the history between these two points in time or between this point in time in the, and the present. So let's do v2 and the present. So I, I could do git log uh, and I could say um, v2 and uh, if I say just v2, I think that's going to, uh, you know, do all commits up to that point. Uh, let's see, I don't remember exactly the syntax, but I think it's something like this. Head, okay, there you go. So I, I can specify the starting point and the end point of um, a range in the log. Uh, so with this, uh, you know, you could, you could see um, just the history between that tag and the present. You could also, you know, remember that you can use, for example, hat to say not the head, but you know, one commit before, and, or same thing with the flag, because notice that if I do this command, I don't see the tag, because the tag is one commit behind. So let's do this then, let's add one hat here to say, well, what the commit prior to v2. With that, you know, I already see the tag, which is you know, pleasant for me, because I can confirm that I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do. And uh, so I can now you know, narrow down the history to that. Uh, and again, you know, now, now that you know our flags, you could also add them here. You could say by, by Jenny, author Jenny, um, 
and now you would narrow down just her commits and you get rid of any other commit. So with that, um, what else I wanted to show you? Ah, okay, the short log. So this, you know, usually, you know, so, or usually sometimes you want, um, you know, to find who committed between one um, release and the other. So let's say that we're interested in V1.6.3 uh, and V2, um, right? So let's say that we want this. There you go. So I, I'm, you know, finding commits between these two uh, tags, and and sometimes you just want to know well between those two tags who uh, has created commits. So there is a short log, and it has a flag minus s that makes it very succinct. And in this particular case, I'm specifying the range between the last two versions to see who has committed in that in that range. So it looks like I messed up. Git short log. Ah, okay, because I'm doing, there you go. What's happening is that, you know, I, I don't want to use my, um, my, my alias. Instead, I want to do, where is it? Where is the short log? Here it is. Okay, so short log minus S, uh, so not my alias, just git short log is a, is a command in itself. And let's see that I, I say that I want the, from the version 1.6.3 to the version uh, v2.0.0. So here you see who committed and how many commits they did. Uh, this output, we can now that we are very fluent with the terminal, we can start doing something more interesting. Say that we can pipe that to sort um, that, um, that list. We're going to sort it in reverse order, uh, but first we're going to tell it that usually sort works with um, A, B, C with letters. So we're going to tell it explicitly that we want to sort numbers with N and R for reverse because I want the highest committer at the top. Uh, and, and that's it. So let's see who they were. Okay, so between these two tags, Jenny committed 231 times. Uh, plus 13 because she logged with a different name here. Same with Hadley, he committed 23. Um, uh, yeah, nowhere else. And I committed just once. Uh, but this is a useful command when you want to thank the contributors uh, for a new release. So you have to find who committed between the, the last release and this one release and how many commits you may be interested to see, you know, who are your, your, your strongest contributors to the, to the project. So, uh, with that, I, want, I covered everything I wanted to tell you about uh, log, and there's two more um, commands that uh, I would like to cover. Um, so, before we leave, you know, git log, git short log, git grep, uh, do we have any questions or comments here? Okay, one reflection is that uh, these things that I'm doing on the terminal, there are a lot of those features that are available to you in a very fluid way through GUIs. So if you do use a client, a Git, a Git client, which I recommend, maybe Git Kraken, maybe RStudio, maybe um, GitHub Desktop or something, um, generally the ability to dig into the history of the, of the repo uh, is, is very, very good. Um, so probably, Probably everything that I've shown today, you could do it with a GUI. Uh, so at least um, I hope to have kind of inspired you to dig into those features and know how to do them with the tool that, that you prefer. This is a series about the terminal, so I'm showing you how to do it with the terminal, but of course you are not tied uh, to it. Uh, this just demonstrates what you can do. Um, so th th some things that relate to the to the log is like git show for example you know git show just shows one commit and uh, and it shows also the changes um generally uh, i mean by default it will show you the last commit uh, but it is simply a shortcut for git log um with the minus p patch um flag because you want to see the, the changes and um, and what else? And the minus n one, which tells uh, Git to give you n is for the count 
of um, items that you want to see in the log. So if I say just one, if I say three, I would see just three commits. Let's, let me sh let me show you that, right? But if I say the same with the p as well, with minus p, and then uh, one, sorry, that's what I wanted to say to show minus one, then what I get is the same output that I would get if I use git, sh git show. So git show is just a special case of git log with the minus p flag and the minus um, n count to, to one, right? Uh, so you can do the same for specific commits. Uh, so for example, you can do git show, uh, git show, oh, head, hat, 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 you know, to see the, the three commits ago and see what changed. And that's that's what changed. It actually was precisely on the on the tag, um, which you can also, uh, you could also refer to that tag specifically. Uh, then there is git blame, um, which I think is, is um, an unfortunate name, but uh, what it does, I think it's, it's being called now annotate as well. Um, what it does is allows you to uh, say, if you want to git blame a file news, for example, MD, uh, you will now who edited each line of the file um, and when. So that's that's cool when, especially when you need to find who might be the best person to ask about a change in the code base, something that you're not familiar with, uh, and you need to find a collaborator that, that might be familiar with that part because of a bug or because of whatever. Uh, and uh, and finally, and, and to end, um, I wanted to uh, remind you that if you want to travel back, because this is all good to explore the history, but what if you want to actually go back in time? Okay, you remember that uh, git uh, checkout allows you to go uh, to different points in the history and this particularly uh, fluid when you have the ability to check out a tag or when you have the ability to check out a branch because those are just shortcuts for the very awkward name of, of a shop. Uh, so if I wanted to check out the tag v2, um, it's, it's easy. I can do like git checkout as, as I go with a, with a branch v2 zero and uh, and here it is so if I show you the log uh, notice that this SHA here is precisely where the tag is but uh, but that's kind of um, convenient when you do have let me ch change to my master branch here we are but that's convenient when you have a branch but remember that you can check out a branch at any SHA in the history of your commit so if you want to explore the say the history of this repository at this point in time what I do is I just copy that SHA and I do git checkout, checkout minus V for branch. And I'm going to create one, it's called explore, commit, and I'm going to paste the SHA, right? So now I'm standing, as you can see, in my new branch called git, uh, called explore commit. So if I show you the log there, you can see that I'm at, at that point in the history. And now I could do something like, you know, grep, you know, what, what if I do um, git grep uh, to do now, for example, right? So I'm exploring now in the current working tree at that point in the history, right? So with the tools that you learned, you can, uh, today you can um, um, explore the repo, and then you just check out a branch wherever you found that there is something interesting and you, um, you, you just travel to that point in the history. Or uh, one other thing that you know, is very common to do is to check out um, a file from that point in time. So I could do git check out um, from the branch explore. So let's say that you know, that branch called explore commit, I found that uh, I know the news file is particularly interesting there. So I can check it out to bring it now to the current working tree. So you can see that the file is there as added, but I could reset it to show you uh, more conveniently the changes. So this is the file as it was uh, in the past. And what you see in green and red is the difference between um, what it is now and what it was before, right? So I could, I could commit now this change to basically take this file news back to what it was in that point in time. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do git checkout, just master, right? So I'm going to uh, git checkout everything here. So my working tree is clean now. 
Okay, so that was a lot. I hope to have inspired you to read more about uh, specific commands that may have interested you. Uh, I hope they have given you like a range of options for things that you might want to do uh, and you didn't, maybe you didn't know how to do them, but now you know they are possible. And if, of course, you're not gonna remember because there are a lot of commands, but you know, there is this video and there is the, the amazing documentation, very terse, but amazing documentation of, of Git and lots of resources online. So we are about uh, to leave, but before doing that, I'll just open the room to see if there is any question. No questions? Okay, and with that, I thank you for your patience, for being, for hanging out here in, in this very, very long series about working with Git from the terminal. We have come to, finally to the end. Uh, but uh, I think that even when at times might have been a little slow for some, um, maybe a little too deep for others, um, I, I think um, we did a, a, a good record. We left a good record of all the tools that can empower you to work effectively uh, as contributors to, to our um, you know, organization uh, in two degrees. So these tools um, are very powerful. Then how you interact with them is up to you. You may, um, you may have already your uh, GUI, your favorite uh, Git client, or you may like just to play with the terminal as I, as I do. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, see you next week with uh, something else. We'll have to figure something out. Ciao, ciao.